how do you create a really safe learning environment for folks? You want to encourage risk-taking and experimentation. That is crucial to learning. Otherwise, how will people learn if they don't risk an experiment? Reduce the fear of failure, so provide that psychological safety for people to be able to fail without worrying too much about the consequence, and provide consistent support and feedback as people learn. OK, let's talk about some specific examples. So those were the generalities, the general framework, the 30,000 foot overview. Let me talk about some specific examples. One is peer mentoring as a successful learning initiatives. So again, I can guarantee to you, you already have some generative AI early adopters. And you want to identify them, encourage them to come forward, facilitate knowledge sharing and skill development by pairing them with employees who are not early adopters of generative AI, but are willing to take it on. So you need to get those people who are early adopters to get to them to come up forward, reward them, say, hey, I know you've been using generative AI without official support. It's OK. Come forward. We are welcoming you. We want you to be a peer mentor to others. And so get their best practices, see what worked well for them, <clears throat> and then assign them as peer mentors to others who want to learn about generative AI. And that way, you also build stronger professional relationships, which is also nice. Let me tell you about a client of mine, a mid-sized tech company who did this. So the early adopter volunteers, they were volunteers as peer mentors and trainers. Again, we got them to come forward. We told them, it's fine that you were using generative AI. Come forward, tell us what you've been doing and you'll be peer mentors and trainers to others. So we they covered different AI topics from coding, of course, with tech company, to content creation in the marketing division, to prompting. You, Of course, how do you actually prompt generative AI to provide the output that you want to get? And so that really enhanced collaboration and knowledge exchange across teams. So that was a really effective strategy, that peer mentoring. So you want to think about where in your company can you adopt peer mentoring as a strategy? Peer mentoring is a quite effective tool. And you want to think about how are you going to get those generative AI early adopters to volunteer and put themselves forward and encourage them and reward them as part of the official evaluation, performance evaluation systems, of course. So the people on the mid-sized tech company that I mentioned, it was part of their performance evaluation to act as those peer mentors and trainers. So that was integrated as part of their performance evaluation. So think about doing that integration as part of creating the peer mentor relationships. Next, thinking about actually training. So I started with those early adopters. That is a really relatively easy thing to do because people are doing that all right, I can guarantee to you some people in your company are doing that. Workshops are a little bit more difficult because you need to get trainers. So I provide training, others provide training. So you want to think about getting trainers who would actually train people on this generative AI best practices. So hands-on workshops and seminars. So workshops, seminars, in-person, virtual like this one, obviously. That provides in-depth training on various generative AI tools and technologies. Now, you might have heard about generative AI tools like OpenAI's ChatGPT. That is a very famous one. And right now, their latest model is the GPT-4 Omni. It's a quite good model. It's one of the best, if not the best model. But the thing about that GPT-4 Omni is that it's best used by individuals. When you're using on a company level, you want to get the same version, GPT-4 Omni, available through Microsoft, through its Azure cloud. It's $20 per month per user. And what it does is that it enables you to have your company data completely safe and secure within the Microsoft cloud. It will not be used for any training. It will not be used for any other purposes. It will be held within your cloud. And so within your own data processes, they will not be used for anything else. 
also you can get the your version of copilot which is the microsoft's name for the gpt for the gpt4 omni so it's copilot you can get it trained on your company data and getting it trained on your company data is great because then it can give much more customized answers for you so microsoft i, I don't have any affiliation with microsoft i do own some stock but i also own google stock so google also provides a very nice model called Gemini, Gemini 1.5 Pro. So that's a really nice model. So you can use that. It is a little bit less advanced currently than the GPT-4 Omni, which again, OpenAI provides. It's the same one as Microsoft uses. Anthropic Claude 3.5 Sonnet is also a very strong model, probably about maybe a little bit weaker, but it's, it's, it's a little bit stronger than the Gemini model, and maybe about the same or maybe a little bit weaker than the GPT-4 Omni. So those are the main tools that you would be using. Those are the best. You should not be using anything else. And of course, those are chat tools. They will also do coding for you. They will also do image creation. They will also you can use other tools for sound creation and video creation. So there are lots of other technologies and techniques which use those basic models as wrappers, essentially integrate with them and provide business enterprise services. And so you want to know about those tools and train your people on all of them. Encourage practical application of learned skills would be the next step. So get people to learn and then you see, OK, how can you apply those skills in their actual workflows? That's what you want to be thinking about. So get those trainings in and then focus on practical application. I'll give an example from a regional insurance company that I worked with to help them integrate generative AI. So they held some regular workshops. I trained them on generative AI implementation where participants gained practical AI skills which really improved their individual and team efficiency. I think their individual efficiency was improved by an average of something like 15% and team efficiency by something like 20% because you get team benefits. So, and that's just the initial three months after going to the training. Of course, they're in, they keep increasing their ability as they keep learning more about generative AI and see how they can integrate generative AI into their workflows. So think about workshops and how you can apply that to your company. Next, micro learning. So we talked about workshops. Those are broad workshops, presentations for a number of people. Micro learning is much more customized. So after you have a workshop, micro learning is going to fill the gaps and get people to specialize in various areas of generative AI. So you break down, down those complex generative AI topics into short and focused lessons that people can go in depth. So these are gonna be going from the 101 of a workshop to a 201, to a 301, to a 401. So use videos, quizzes, and interactive content. Those are great micro learning tools and allow learning at an individual's own pace, whatever makes the most sense for them, for their needs. Let's talk about original financial services company in which I worked on developing some micro learning. They offered, we offered micro learning courses in generative AI and we provide flexible learning paths which were tailored to individual needs. And in fact, we use generative AI as a quiz tool. So generative AI trained on the company's information was used as a quiz tool to see, okay, what does this employee need to learn? And then the appropriate content from the micro learning various videos, quizzes, and so on was provided to these employees based on their needs. And that improved employee skills and productivity as a result of this. So we saw that within six months, individual employees, after going through this learning, improved their productivity by about 20% or so which is great. I mean, that's a great improvement. So, so think about this micro learning and where you can integrate this. This is pretty easy to integrate. Again, after giving a broader workshop, 
to integrate this into your company, whatever your company's e-learning system is, so Blackboard or whatnot, whatever you're using, having some micro-learning content customized to your company's needs and based on your company's own data is very valuable. And finally, training gamification. So gamification is, of course, a way of rewarding people and incentivizing learning. So incorporating game elements like points and leaderboards, that combines very well with the micro-learning. So again, given we have those peer mentors, which takes that's the easiest thing to do because it takes immediate advantage of people who are already using generative AI within your company. Then going on to workshops, you have to organize those, takes a little bit more effort. Then micro-learning, so I recommend however leads your workshops to create micro-learning content. That's what I typically do. And then that micro-learning goes into gamification. So around the micro-learning, create gamification with points and leaderboards, badges, and certifications for people who are getting skills and getting better in generative AI. And that's what will create competitive and collaborative learning experiences alike. So that's what really helps optimize learning for folks. Let me tell you about a large professional services firm with which I worked that integrated this tool of training gamification. It introduced gamified elements for generative AI skills, and that improved engagement and course completion rates. So that we definitely saw improvement in course completion and engagement after having these elements where people were recognized publicly for with certificates, badges, points, leaderboards for going through these micro learning courses. So increased retention and application of skills as a result. So think about training gamification, how you can integrate that into your company. Now, once you have, so those are examples of how to integrate learning. And you want to, of course, evaluate learning. So leverage data and analytics to, to learn how people learn. Track learning progress and outcomes through analytics. Use data to identify skills gaps and training needs. And that's where you can get those micro learning engaged quite effectively. You can also direct peer mentors to help address that. Then personalized learning experiences based on data insights. And you can use generative AI as a tool to personalize learning. I mentioned that. And continuously improve programs based on feedback and data. So that's how you leverage data and analytics for learning. And doing so, you'll promote continuous learning. So you'll encourage a growth mindset among employees around generative AI, provide opportunities for continuous ongoing education and development. So keep doing more of this, keep adding to your workshops, keep adding to your micro learning, keep adding certificates and digital badges and so on. Recognize and reward learning achievements. So that can be, again, that gamification is good, and you can also publicly celebrate those people, and my clients definitely do that, who make good advances in their generative AI learning. And that integrate that learning into daily work routines. So see how they, people can learn at that daily level from the processes in which they're engaged in on the practical activities. All right. So that's how you'll go into building a learning culture. So thinking about aligning the learning initiatives that we talked about with broader organizational goals and make sure to engage your leadership in promoting a learning culture. I talked about managers being a little bit reluctant to get into generative AI. So you want to address that problem in advance by promoting leadership engagement in that learning culture. Foster a collaborative and really supportive learning environment for your team through having leaders model how they learn and how have a wraparound learning culture around everyone and celebrate success and milestones in people's learning journeys on individual and team level alike. 